When it comes to controlling contrast in your black and white print, is this better than this? Better than that? Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. That's not better in my head. I was making a print the other day and I wanted to see if there was a difference between using the Ilford multi-grade filter set and my color head. So I thought I would put a side-by-side -side test in there to see if I got a different range of contrast high and low. And if the blank white light from the color head really is like a two filter in the Ilford set, as Ilford claims in their documentation that comes with the paper. While I was at it, I thought I would throw it, uh, go ahead and throw in a uh, comparison to the old Kodak poly contrast filter set, which goes up to five plus or minus one, rather than five and double zero of the Ilford. And since I was doing all that, I thought I'd go ahead and throw in a 58 green filter and a 47B blue filter to see if I could get different contrast with those, either higher with the blue or lower with the green. Because I had read online that some people were claiming to get like a six grade filter contrast with the blue filter as opposed to um, just printing with the multi-contrast filters. So what I thought I would do to set this up is to make test strips using a step tablet. So I am using a uh, Kodak number three tablet, which looks like this. So to give you an idea of what it is, is a piece of film and it has patches on it. You can kind of see against my shirt here that there are little gray patches and it goes from fully clear to fully dark and each step is a half stop. So we can look and see how many steps are visible from black to white at each contrast and compare that to another filter. Let's take a look, uh, a little bit closer look at the step tablet so you know what kind of tool I'm using and then we'll go over to the enlarger and we'll make some strips and compare them. So a Typical step wedge is going to look like this. So this is a number three step wedge. It's, it's fairly large. It's about 10 inches long. So it works really, really well on 8x10 paper to give you a pretty good idea of how this works. So um, they are typically 21 steps, and that goes from a density range of 0 point, or a 0 0.05, which is down here, up to 3 0.05 way up here. So a bunch of little, little steps. I'm using the number three. There are other ones out there that are useful just if you're in the market for such things. This is a number two. So it's about five inches long. So it's really good for um, four by five and 35 millimeter film. Then there's a number one, which is much smaller, a little less useful because it's only, uh, it only has 11 steps. So each one is a full stop. Um, now I am using Kodak. I purchased these from a vendor at a camera swap. So they are used, if you try to find them new, they are very, very expensive. You can, however, get uh, like Stouffer brand. Um, that's this here. You can buy these new. They have 21 and 31 step. 21 is half stops. 31 step would be third stops if you really need that fine of a control. Uh, but these are still available new and they are uh, very affordable. So a nice little handy tool to have if you're going to be testing different things. So I'm going to be using the larger one to make uh, test strips on paper. Um, in future videos, I'll be doing stuff where I might use this one uh, on film. So we'll get to that another day. But just so you understand what kind of tool I'm using, it's this. And it's going to create a, a variety of gray patches on my paper. Not the most exciting thing to look at, but it is very, very consistent and it shows you a lot of great information. So pick one up if you can. So all you need to do to set this up is really just the same thing as a contact sheet. Um, so I'm using a contact proofer just because I can hinge the glass over and keep this in the same spot every time. So there is an emulsion side to these and I'm just going to uh, um, take this down to the glass 
that way I can just flip it over and it's in the same spot every time. And I've got a piece of tape here that I'll put the paper up against just to make it a little easier to line things up consistently. That is not necessary for you, but it's just a way for me to make sure everything is um, easy for you guys to look at when I'm doing this. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to cut some strips of paper. I'll put them in here, close it down, and expose it. Um, you don't need to do like a test strip. This is your test strip. <clears throat> All you do is just give it a random exposure. Uh, and if you find most of the exposure is down in the blacks and most of your whites are blank, or say like more than half of the strip is blank white, give it more exposure and each stop will move two steps up. If on the other hand, everything is mostly black, give it less exposure and it'll move everything down um, two stops or two squares for every stop. So I'm just gonna give it randomly uh, a 30 second exposure. We'll see how that does. This is set up for uh, the same thing as like an 8x10 exposure. Uh, same thing I'll just do for contact sheets. To give a baseline, I'm going to first choose my number two filter from my Ilford, which is my most commonly used thing, uh, or set of filter packs. Put that under the lens, put a piece of paper underneath the glass, just kind of line it up, close it down, and give it just a base 30 second exposure. We can adjust from there if we find it's too light or too dark. Okay, here is my multi-grade two. So Ilford, I kind of adjusted the exposure so that the gray patches are just in the middle. Uh, it doesn't really matter. There's really no reason why they have to be. I just thought it'd be easier for you guys to see. So. The Ilford 2 filter, I can see clearly, um, this is full black, then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 shades total, from full black to full white. So that's my baseline. From there, we can then compare everything else. So let's do a multi-grade double zero filter, then we'll do the 5, then we'll start comparing everything else to those. So Let's do double zero. So now that I have my exposure time figured, we're going to do the exact same exposure time, this time with the double zero filter. So we're gonna put that under the lens, a new strip of paper, and a 30 second exposure. Okay, here's my double zero. quite a bit more expansion on the tones from the previous. So I've got, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So instead of 10, I now have 15 shades of gray clearly delineated. So that gives us a baseline for the double zero. Let's now take a look at the five filter. And now we will go ahead and do the five. We already know from Ilford's documentation that to keep exposures equal, once we get to a four or higher filter, we need to double the exposure time. So I am actually going to open up my lens one stop rather than go to a full minute exposure time. All right, here's our five. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight shades from full black to full white. So not as much compression as there is expansion. Two filter gives us 10 shades. This gives us eight. So I'm only losing two, two shades there. Whereas the double zero gave us 15, a gain of five. So that's actually quite surprising to me. I, I never really checked that out before. But let's go ahead and do the Kodak filters and we'll compare 
the two, the uh, minus one, and the plus five to the Ilford to see what kind of comparison we get there. For this next series, I am going to use the Kodak filter. We're going to start with the number two and we're gonna keep the time equal, but I am gonna put the lens back down to the original setting and see how that comes out. All right, let's see the Kodak two compared to the Ilford, so Ilford Kodak, and they are really identical. So I'm getting exactly the same number of tones, 10 up through there. They're not separating any differently really. So that's good. Let's check out the double zero Ilford to the minus one Kodak. Now we will go ahead and use the minus one. We'll adjust exposure if we find we need to. Okay, here is minus one Kodak. And again, I am getting identical. So this is the double zero Ilford, the lowest contrast we can get, the Ilford set. This is the minus one Kodak, the lowest we can get with a Kodak. And I am getting exactly the same number of tones. So no difference there. So that's good to know. All right, let's go to the fives. And finally, with this set, the five plus. So let's slip that in there, new piece of paper, and expose. Okay, Kodak plus five, or five plus. So Ilford five, Kodak five, once again, exactly the same number of tones, which is what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So no difference there. So good. So that means if you have a Kodak set and you're at least printing on Ilford paper, you're going to get the exact same range of contrast as if you were using the Ilford set. So that's good to know if you are in the uh, shopping fade phase. Okay, let's look at the color head. So I'm going to remove all the filter. I'm going to stop the lens down a full stop just as a, uh, a starting point and I'm going to use white light from the enlarger. This should be equal to a two filter. And here is a color head with white light. Ilford claims that if I use white light, I get equivalent of a filter two, and I am seeing exactly that. I am getting the same range of tones. That's perfect, that's great. So at least with a color head, um, with a, a number two filter, if you're using white light, you're gonna get the same thing. So let's check double zero. So now I'm going to dial in the yellow. The Ilford paperwork says 199 points of yellow for a DeVere enlarger. Uh, my enlarger goes up to 200, so I'm gonna stick it to the man and go all the way to 200. I'm gonna get that extra one point of yellow to see if that cranks it. Double zero, and here is the yellow. So this is full yellow, um, all the way up to 200. Let's see, am I getting any difference here at all? No, I'm not. I have a very slight variation, uh, simply because I think my exposures are a little different because the double zero is the same time as the two filter. That's what Kodak, or uh, Ilford claims, that's what I got. The color head, however, because I'm putting a filter in place where I didn't have one, the time changed. So trying to get them equivalent um, on the scale, I, I fiddled with the time a little bit. I didn't get it exact. And I also opened my aperture up a little bit, but I, I did not necessarily get uh, exactly the same. So other than that though, the tones, the, the number of tones are exactly the same. So at least a yellow, uh, on the full yellow on the color head, gives me completely uh, equal contrast to the double zero. All right, let's look at the magenta. And now we'll do the same thing with magenta. Again, it says 199 points. I'm gonna crank it to 200. Shouldn't make any difference really. New strip of paper and expose. Okay. All right, so here's the magenta. And again, my exposure times aren't exactly the same. They're, they're pretty close, but I am getting exactly the same number of tones. There's no 
difference between the amount of contrast. You are going to have to change your time, however, uh, or aperture to get equal exposure density. But when it comes to contrast, I'm getting the exact same number of tones. So color head is in fact, at least with mine, bear in mind, um, your filters can fade, either your multi-grade or your color head filters, even dichroics can be affected over time. Um, but in my case, my filters are working exactly as Ilford said they would, and I am getting full contrast control with my color head if I chose to use that. But I have a time difference that I'd have to overcome uh, that is not quite as uh, equal or direct as the Ilford set. Now when it comes to the Rattan gel filters, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Green 58. So we'll put that under the lens, put in a new piece of paper, and give that an exposure. All right, here is the 58 green, compared to the double zero Ilford filter. And again, I am getting full equal tonal range. So 15 steps throughout the whole thing. Now, my time's a little different uh, because the green filter blocks a tremendous amount of light. So I believe I had to open up uh, two, maybe two and a half stops and change my time another half stop. So about two to three stops different if, I'm, if I remember right. So um, expect some time change between the two, but that tells me that the absolute flattest light I get with the Ilford set is about the same as what I would get with just green light, pure green light right here. So nothing lower contrast without changing a developer or something like that. Um, but yeah, 58, great, that worked. All right, let's take a look at the blue. And now we're going to go for the 47B and we'll see how that looks. All right, and here's the blue compared to the five filter and I'm getting the same result. Again, my densities are a little bit different, but I'm getting, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So am I getting an extended range with the blue 47B blue filter? No, I'm getting the exact same thing as before. So that means I'm getting full contrast with the five filter without changing to a high contrast developer or some other technique. My filtration itself is not going to give me anything extra. And there we can see that we are really not getting any kind of difference between them. Whether I'm using the Ilford, the Kodak, the Colorhead, or the blue and green, I am achieving the exact same range of contrast from all four. Now granted, I am using the same kind of paper for all of this. So this is Ilford classic paper, uh, fiber based. I may get a different range of contrast if I change paper. So Ilford Classic may give me a different contrast than say an ADOX paper. So that's a whole different topic. All I'm really looking at is if keeping the variable of paper the same and developer, because I can change my contrast with the choice of developer. We'll cover that in another video. If I keep those two variables the same, paper, developer, will the light source change my contrast? In this case, no, I find that I get the exact same contrast if I use the two filter for both Ilford and Kodak. White uh, balance or uh, white light from the color head gives me a two filter just like Ilford said it would. Likewise, all of my low contrast, the green filter, the double zero Ilford, the minus one Kodak and maximum yellow from the color head all gave me the same low contrast. On the other end, the five filter Ilford, five plus Kodak, 47B blue, and max magenta all gave me the maximum contrast. I did not see any difference between any of them. I did find, however, that they changed the exposure time, both high and low end. 
the exposure times were different. So I had to adjust the exposure times in order to get the patches on my strips at the same spot. But even if I didn't do that, it's still going to show me the exact same number of patches between dark and light. But it did show me that if I'm going to use a 47B blue filter, then I have to give, I think it was like two stops additional than a five filter from Ilford. So it blocks more light. Now, <clears throat> I did make a print from each of these sources. So I've got my color, I've got my Kodak, and I've got my Ilford. And they all came out exactly the same using the equivalent of a minus half filter um, I'm sorry, a one and a half filter from Ilford. So half a uh, contrast lower than a two. And it gave me the exact same print from each source. I did have to adjust my time a little bit to get the same density, but the contrast is exactly the same. I see zero difference between them. And if I didn't write what source I used on the back of each print, I wouldn't have known today when they were dry which one was which. So whether you use the Ilford, the Kodak, the color head, or a blue and green filter, as long as you are using them uh, consistently, you're going to get the exact same amount of contrast for your prints. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please feel free to go to my Teespring store if you want to help support this channel. I'll see you next time.